This is Jonathan Ferguson, the keeper of firearms and artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And on this week's episode, we're taking a look back at some of the most cursed weapons to have offended poor Jonathan in 2022. Oh Dave, what have you done to this poor, innocent Glock 18? I mean, what can I say? It's called the Porter Pooper 5000. I mean, do you really want an attempt at serious commentary on this thing? Uh, this is a sort of extremely cursed P90, both in its redesign and then of course somebody has decorated it. Jonathan and the whole team here at GameSpot just want to say thank you to everyone who's watched the show over the last year. We really appreciate your support. And if you enjoy this kind of content, make sure to keep an eye out for our new series, Loadout, a show where we take a look at the history and impact of some of the most iconic weapons in gaming, from the sniper and LMG through to the M16 and P90. Jonathan will be making plenty of appearances over on that show too, so make sure to check it out. Right, let's take a look at some of Jonathan's pain and torment from the past year. Right, what have we got here? An M1 or M1A1 Thompson with jungle mags. That's the least of this thing's problems. We've got a really weird, well, it's not that weird. Okay, so the, let's be kind. So the, <laughs> the foregrip, the wooden foregrip of the Thompson has been replaced with a sheet steel heat shield slash handguard that's perforated. That's a valid choice in, in a world of limited resources. The buttstock is the real problem here, needless to say. It is a boot. It's not even a shoe, as the name would suggest, so the name is incorrect. I don't know why you would do that. Okay, let, let's be, let's be uh, charitable. So it's the apocalypse. You've got the ability to fabricate some sort of a buttstock for this thing, but it's not comfortable. You've got no available rubber blocks or ability to stitch leather so for a butt pad you just stick a boot on the end of it what's really throwing me off and making my brain hurt is what appears to be a sliding left side cocking handle this being the simplified version of the thompson it should have a right side cocking handle with a simple round handle like you've all seen shouldn't be on the left side and it shouldn't be a weird rectangular shape. That looks very familiar, but I can't think what it might be from. And it's called the Shoe Mac Uzi 9. Well, it's not nine millimeter, it's 45, even in the game. So I don't know where the nine comes from. I don't know where the Uzi comes in. I don't know, because there's no Uzi on this. I don't know what it is about the poor old Tommy gun. People cannot resist putting it in space. <laughs> now, this is quite a nicely done one, but uh, I, I'm not a fan of neon and multi, you know, different colors and yeah, not, not really my thing. We just saw a round of ammunition in the drum there. For some reason, as well as the, the projectile bit having a glow to it, so it's, it's got some type of an effect. The prime is also glowing bright blue. I don't know why that would be the case. It's either an energy weapon or it's a normal projectile weapon, I would think. But uh, this appears to be a mixture of both. Making a making an energy weapon that, that harks back to the Thompson, I can get behind that. I'm not so big a fan of modifying a Thompson to make it futuristic. But clearly it, it speaks to something in people because it happens quite a bit. Uh, this is a sort of extremely cursed P90, both in its redesign, its inexplicable, maybe anime-inspired redesign, and then, of course, somebody has decorated it. So it still has the P90 cocking handles, the version of the magazine catch. The magazine is weird. The, I don't like that sort of reverse outrigger sight mount. I think there's a reason why the P90 has the bridge over the top of the receiver to stabilize the sights. Uh, the whole thing just looks like a toy. Right, I'm getting uh, pink mist, and not the sort of pink mist that I usually associate with um, the use of firearms. Just generic neon pink mist when we hit the enemy, almost like some sort of paintball effect. I think the tracer fire as well. I mean, you don't get tracer fire out of firearms unless you put tracer ammunition in them, but regardless, for this gun, it's pink. It's unspeakable, really. <laughs> Thank you. 
Oh, Dave, what have you done to this poor, innocent Glock 18? At its heart, however, it's one of these, the Glock 18C. The C stands for compensated. And here is ours, or one of ours, in its original Tupperware-style container uh, with, the, with the markings on it, which is very nice. So when people call the Glock tactical Tupperware, um, they're not just referring to the plastic frame. Well, they might be, but uh, it actually does come in Tupperware. <laughs> now, from what I can see under all of this nonsense, it's it's a good representation of, of an 18C. Uh, now, I can't uh, hope to replicate the dubious uh, configuration scene here, but I happen to have a, a surefire light module here. Very simply fits to the accessory rail and makes this one look a little bit more like the one in the game. Now, uh, a, a light and, and well, in this case, laser module, a very sensible accessory for a modern combat pistol. Fully automatic, full, uh, automatic capability and a 50 round drum, less so. I mean, what can I say? It's called the Porter Pooper 5000. I mean, do you really want an attempt at serious commentary on this thing? I suppose you're gonna get it. I mean, the thing looks like it's covered in it, doesn't it? I don't know if there's a clean version of this gun. Inexplicably, the yellow bits are clean and then the rest of it is just brown. Maybe it's an aesthetic, I don't know. All right, let's watch it. Well, as we could have predicted, it's a sort of flamethrower look at grenade launcher that fires irradiated shite. Can I say, this This is unusual even for a Borderlands game, I would suggest, and it just, it defies interpretation. That there's, <laughs> I'm gonna try anyway, there's some sort of a vented nozzle, like a, like a, well, more like a weed burner really than a flamethrower, but you know, reminds me of video game flamethrower. Uh, a, a completely pointless front sight there, lots of pipes, and it's kind of punting out explosive radioactive poo bombs. I, I tell a lie, the front sight is not completely pointless. It is for use in, in conjunction with a really terrible rear sight that has a weird shape for no reason. But at least you've got something to line up your front sight with, I suppose. And then, yeah, I'm not entirely sure what's happening with the rest of it. We seem to be re-coating it with poop at one point. One of my favorite firearms of all time, as some of you know, the MP5, except it's not. Now, as the gun itself, uh, I've grabbed something pretty similar here, MP5A3, and it happens to be in the same configuration, except for the lack of rails on the forend, as the, I won't call it an abomination, because it's not completely cursed, but for an uh, MP5 fan like me, it's pretty far removed. Biggest issue for me would be the magazine well area is far too wide. In reality, it's as wide as it needs to be to fit this magazine. Going along with that is the horrific, I don't know what, I don't know what to compare it to, but a gigantic magazine catch, which sits here, which is where the real sort of secondary magazine catch sits on the MP5 that nobody uses, unless they have a semi US semi-automatic only version, like an HK94, where that's your only magazine catch. Actual users of this thing use the paddle magazine release, which is not on this gun. So pretty disappointed with the MP5 in Modern Warfare 2 2022. Okay, so watching this thing in action, we see that the cocking handle is not the HK shape. It's not even the G3 shape with the longer leverage, which this doesn't need for anyway, it's not that. It's just a rod. I mean, you could replace the cocking handle with a cylindrical rod like that, but why would you? And it does make it look pretty weird. So we, we see a, a version of the reload there where we get a, a fresh magazine inserted. We slap the cocking handle to chamber the round. That's how you're supposed to use it. We then see a press check of the chamber 
that's what you definitely don't want to do with an HK roller locked system. You, you don't have a, a means of forward assisting that to make sure it's now fully shut. Your rollers might be ever so slightly out of engagement which means the gun's not gonna fire. So you do not wanna be doing a press check on this system. For one. Right, this, this game is really taxing my, my brain, which is probably an indicator that I should switch it off. So we've got this thing, and it's obviously a spin on the Old West lever action rifle. But it's so complicated. Uh, it's got a spin spiral fluted bolt which someone has obviously seen on like a high-end bolt action or something and has incorporated that because it looks cool doesn't really make much sense on this and we've got the john browning bolt system that's in the winchester 1892 for example rather than the classic toggle action it's not quite the browning action but it does have the bolt that protrudes out the back uh, to cock the hammer so there's some mechanical functionality going on there and then we can see the rounds conventional looking they look almost like five point steel cased 5.56 millimeter rounds interestingly and they are held on a leather shell holder that is part of or no sorry strapped to this very elaborate wooden stock i'd have to say i like the overall design um the, the sort of black and gold and the dark wood it actually looks pretty good to me it's just very busy compared to a real gun. And the, the, the cartridges being held uh, opposing each other rather than all going the same way would make quick loading a bit awkward. And mechanically, I can't really figure out how it's feeding those rounds. There's, there's a tube below the barrel that would normally be the magazine, but it looks too short and not kind of connected up to the mechanism in a way that would work. Down. Okay, in trying to figure out if this thing is mechanically viable, I have spotted a weird quirk of the iron sights. So it does have iron sights, as you can see. It looks like it has several. It's got a, <laughs> it's got a groove in what looks like a lot like a conventional tangent sight, but it has the ramps for the tangent on top of the tangent so it's got design elements of a real rifle sight but they're upside down and then it, so, so you could use the, the the groove the notch in the back of that as your sight then there's a sort of gold colored horseshoe thing that looks like it could be a rear sight and then there's a flip up front sight with a round protector and a, and a gold post sitting behind that and i can't see how that would even flip up to act as a rear sight and it isn't a rear sight because it's a post. <laughs> this really makes my brain hurt. I think all of that is just included because it looks busy and interesting, but it doesn't make a lick of sense as far as I can tell. Revolvers. Gotta have a revolver in... Well, any game descended from Half-Life needs to have a Magnum revolver, in my view, regardless of how realistic that is. Uh, and of course, we've got one faction who can basically, in theory, buy whatever weapons they want, so what the heck. The latest version of Counter-Strike has a modernised revolver with a Picatinny rail on the top. Well, not really a muzzle weight. Again, it's a rail adapter on the front. This is one of the Smith & Wesson Performance Center models, based on the old school um, series of revolver frames. Those haven't really changed. But the, the barrel profile, the ability to mount uh, red dot sights on there, once upon a time you'd have needed a custom mount to achieve that. And with modern revolvers, this type of revolver anyway, uh, you have a standard Picatinny rail on the top, which changes up the looks for the player as well and lets you use a scope. There's always been something about a scoped revolver. Again, thinking back to that Half-Life Magnum. That was quite the revelation in 1998. <laughs> The fanning of the hammer, not really necessary. It's a double action revolver, as has demonstrated in the animation, with a, a weirdly sort of clockworky, ratchety sound, which you wouldn't normally hear. I'd worry if you could hear the lockwork of a revolver clacketing away as you pull the trigger. Uh, I mean, if you put your ear next to it, you'll hear it. But. Uh, speaking of putting guns near your head, um, <laughs> spinning it around the finger, not recommended. Not only is it sort of pointless, and the risk is you drop the thing, but uh, Spinning it in that way means you're pointing the thing at yourself whilst putting pressure on the trigger. And if you were stupid enough to do it, 
sort of extra stupid enough to do it with the hammer cocked in single action mode well you've got a very good chance of shooting yourself or at least someone behind you but i understand the impulse to depict a revolver in old west style if you're going to do that though i probably would have gone for something like a uh, red hawk or you know, some modern magnum take or bfr maybe a uh, mag- modern magnum take on the old school single action army and then the fanning would be worthwhile it would look very cool and spinning it around the finger would be a bit safer in theory i know it's a game you're not going to hurt yourself but <laughs> that's yeah uh the burger town classic yeah what can i say not much vaguely horrific with the sort of meat texture so this is <laughs> this is sort of the SA VZ twenty five. This is the Czechoslovakian Cold War era submachine gun. The twenty five is in nine by nineteen, and it has the twenty five that is has this uh, pull and fold, and then press in the latch on the butt plate section to latch it into place. And there it go. So you can use that as a foregrip. The Call of Duty version is. Quite different. The front half is, is pretty close. The cocking handle is different. It's a, it's a completely different shape. Um, open bolt operation. It's got that right. But then the back half, the stock is attached almost like a like a well rod grip with tabs and two screws, not with this all enveloping rear sight section here, which is a more robust setup. And then this rear sight that, I'm, that I don't like is replaced by a standard aperture rear sight with protectors on it. So they've changed up the back end of the gun proportions look different too. Other details are, are changed. I'm going to sound like a broken record, but I, if, if you're trying to replicate an historical firearm, replicate it. heck is going on there so we've we've opened up the, the gun that apparently does fire bullets from a sort of a drum mag at the back and we've shoved a thermite grenade which i've seen being used in the game the footage that gets shoved into the action somehow even though bullets have to get from the back of the gun to the front of the gun so i'm not sure how that would work and then that is somehow superheating something looks like the barrel is getting superheated and then that makes the bullets do thermite things not a clue. Doesn't make a lick of sense, but it's quite cool. Let's see what damage it does. Right, so the effect is fairly subdued. There's not a great deal of incendiary effect that I'm seeing there. It just kind of, as it says on the indicator there, revs up your uh, conventional ammunition. Now, regardless of feed issues, shall we say, heat is a massive problem for firearms. Now, I'd be, I'd be less concerned about that if this game didn't use conventional self-contained metallic ammunition with brass cases. If it used some futuristic ammunition system, I, I could get my head around it a bit better. I'm guessing the guns have some sort of cooling system built into them. This one must, because if your cartridge gets red hot, as we're seeing here, you know, thermite's damn hot. Really, really hot. That's how it works. Burns down through things. What happens is the round goes off. Um, you don't have to hit the, the primer in the back of the case to set it off. If you leave it in a fire, or shoot it in a very hot gun. This is, this is why machine guns are typically open bolts so that there's air able to circulate and stop what's called cook off, where the round just blows up. Because if that happens before the bolt's locked, the gun will explode, do it damage, potentially do you damage. So deliberately applying super heat to your firearm is a bad idea. Thanks again for watching. If you enjoy this kind of content, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel as we'll have new episodes of Firearms Expert Reacts every Saturday and new episodes of Loadout every Sunday. Again, please check out the links in the description of the video if you want to help support the Royal Armouries and we'll catch you next time.